Welcome, welcome, welcome to Fit Chat Chit Chat. I'm your hostess, Devondria Sanchez, licensed marriage and family therapist, also known as the Fit Therapist, founder, owner, and client, client of Finding Inner Transformation, where we believe a fit mindset is more than the physical. It is emotional, and most importantly, it is spiritual. If you are not following me on YouTube, please do so at Fit Therapist, and you can also find me on social media handles at Fit Therapist. And I'm just so thankful for today's topic on Fit Chat. So I have the beautiful Jen Miller, and I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. And we have two very amazing guests today. We kind of saying that because we're married to them, too. <laughs> we don't want to get in trouble. Anyway, thank you all for joining in. If you are joining live, please leave your comments, your questions, and your feedback in the chat, and we will make sure we answer them. If you are watching this in a recording, please feel free to do so and put your questions there and we'll make sure they get to the person accordingly. With that being said, we are going to get started with today's topic of the dangers of a dad bod. Jen, tell us who you are. My name is Jen Miller, certified personal trainer, precision nutrition, nutrition coach, and ISSA food specialist. This is my husband, Jeff. I'm Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professional cyclist when it comes to the athletic field, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. And this is. Uh, I am Tyrone Sanchez. I am the hubby of the Fit Therapist. And um, happy to be here. Do I need to explain what I do? Sure. Let's let the people know who you are. Okay. Uh, well, I retired from the Navy after 25 years, went back, and I uh, am a. Um, uh, aviation safety officer uh, at uh, one of the units that I retired out of. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Thank you. So let me just say why I wanted to have this topic. Jen and I, last two weeks ago, we talked about some ways of why someone probably couldn't be losing weight. And we didn't address all the list, the exhausted list of reasons people could have a problem losing weight, but we addressed a couple of them. And we thought about what's another topic that people are really not talk talking about. And one of the things was dad bod. And we recognized how um, it's a little more glamorized than women's bodies. And so we decided to get some um, experiential feedback from dads hello and we are limited by <laughs> we are limited with our experience in that um newsflash we're not dads so we wanted to get in um our husbands who are both avid athletes i would consider them both avid athletes and so we'll talk a little bit more about that and um let's get started so again if you have any questions please put them in the comments so we can address them especially if you are a dad and have been um struggling we can use that word or having a desire to change the way your body looks and i think it's really important to you know demystify some of the myths associated with dad bods and also talk about the psychological components of it so i have a couple questions the first one is i want to know how you both identify or define a dad bot what does that mean when you hear that and i'll start with jeff and then i i want tyrone to how do you identify a dad bot when you hear that what's the first thing that kind of comes comes to your mind a, a dad who's given up on his on his physique you know that it just goes probably through the everyday life and doesn't really have the um the routine or the nutrition or really um motivation to to you know have to be in shape or to be healthy but you know just you know the every day i'm gonna you know eat what i want you know type type you know mentality and not go to the gym and i'll get home and i'll watch tv and you know yeah yeah that's awesome thank you Tom, what, are, what are your thoughts when you hear about dad bod well i'd like to say first of all happy father's day uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, obviously, we're talking dad bod. So, um, I don't necessarily think you have to be a dad per se to have a dad bod. And uh, a dad bod, I you know, I know it's in the news a lot, or it's talked about a lot lately. But what I when I hear that term, dad bod, um, I kind of associate it with the the hardworking dad who who comes home, who's tired. 
Um, you know, we're going to bypass the gym. You know, maybe he's working 12, 13, 16 hour days and um, he's eating whatever, you know, a bowl of chili. Uh, and just kind of, you know, he's tired and, and the body is doing whatever genetics, gave, you know, gave him. I, that's just what I associate uh, hearing a dad bod uh, with, with that. You know, he doesn't mean he's necessarily out of shape, but he might not be physically, you know, the way he, he wants to look. Maybe he's got some skinny arms and a, a bare belly. But, um, you know, it's just come from being tired and working and being a dad. Yeah. You know what? And and I think you're both right. I think there's both spectrums. There's I've given up. I don't know nutrition. I'm not motivated. I'm going to eat chips and drink beer. <laughs> and I think there's another spectrum of I'm tired. And the last thing I can do is burn myself on both ends. And I'm a byproduct of both environments. And so I think there's both sides of the spectrum and maybe there's an in-between. I don't know. Jim, what do you think about the whole dad bod um, term and your thoughts when you and the guys gave great explanations? And I would say I would agree with both. Yeah, I had to kind of look that one up because I wasn't sure what dad bod meant. Mm -hmm. um, was it the dad that was in shape or the dad that wasn't in shape? And like Tyrone said, it, maybe it's not even a dad. It's just someone I think we we start thinking more middle age when, like you said, genetics kind of start to slow down that metabolism. Maybe you had when you were younger um, slows down a little bit and things kind of take their natural course. Um, I have seen people that men, uh, dads, even not dads, who kind of hit a certain age and they've realized things have changed a little bit. And maybe the things they ate before that didn't put weight on them. Now things aren't going so well. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, there can be the mindset of, you know, what do I care? I'm, I'm 40. I don't care anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And then I see the, I, the exact opposite. I'm 40. Things are changing and I don't know what to do. Now I need to do something. Yeah. Um, so it's, a, it's a really good question. And I, I have seen just both ends of the spectrum with, with the dad bod. Um, yes. Yeah, that's good. So someone put, I associated with extra fat in the midsection, poor muscle tone, and the byproduct is low testosterone. And we definitely know those are all elements and reasons and causations to a dad bot. Well, one thing we can definitely agree on, it's a man. Can we agree here on that? <laughs> we can absolutely agree on that. Hallelujah. Okay, so we agree with the fact that it is a male and it can be, from what I was reading, any variation between um, someone who has a poor diet to he's still in the gym, but he is just not taking care of the nutrition part. It could be from a little bit chubby. It could be low testosterone. We have all these things that can impact and cause a dad bod. And so when I was looking at it really what sparked my interest was when will smith came out and he said hey i'm getting rid of my dad bot seth rogan um jen and i looked him up a little bit because he's had a major weight loss uh, more recently and um, i don't think he's a dad so that kind of speaks to that and um you know even when we look at people who do put on massive amounts of weight and not even massive, and you know, 20 pounds can make you look completely different, especially depending yeah. on where it sits. And I forgot, I think maybe it was even time when we talked about genetics, right? You know, some folks carry in the midsection or the hips or the thighs, and it just looks a little bit more disproportionate than other people, especially when we're talking about men. And so this kind of brings me to my next question regarding um, is it glamorized? Because women, we were talking before we started the show, um, we don't get to say there was a small window back in the day where it talked about mommy stripes. Right. Where people were like, yeah, embrace your mommy stripes. Right. Other than that, no one's saying dad bods are cool. I had literally read countless articles where people were like, dad bods are sexy. And they were actually um, condoning that to be a thing because it viewed men more in a um, nurturing situation, uh, that he's fatherly, that he's willing to put his family for. I mean, it was, I thought it was a stretch, y'all. What's your <laughs> thoughts about that being glamorized, Jeff? I've seen you want to say something regarding that. 
uh, <laughs> I don't know if I, you know, I, I, I don't want to get too much into it, but I think that, you know, the way the society works, like, I, I think that society wants to kind of paint that picture for men, right. Mm -hmm. um, in some aspects. So they don't like the masculine man, like that is no longer, mm -hmm. the, you know, um, so what I'm looking for, the role yeah. model, right. The, the mm -hmm. typical like role model man in the household. Like it, I think the society is trying to change it. Uh, so, yeah, that I mean, that's definitely a real thought. Right. Um, yeah. And just to kind of talk about that a little bit, you know, they were saying, you know, it was back in the caveman days, there was a look and it wasn't the dad bod. It was because they were working so much yeah. and their diet was very specific, mainly because and then some people will say, well, guess what? The caveman didn't live that long. Um, you know, I, there's a lot to be said, but at the same point, the physique has changed. Sure. And you know, some people can say that society has now allowed or given permission for bodies to change. And what does that do within the household? <clears throat> so what's your thoughts about that? <clears throat> I think um, one of the things, my mind kind of goes on, on several different places here when you talk about that. Uh, and when we, you know, like Jeff mentioned society, but first we have to be cognizant of which society we're even talking about, because society as we know it, you know, here in the United States is, is different from what we know in maybe yeah. a society in Africa or the Middle East. And I bring that up because I, as a, a, uh, a middle-aged gentleman that's nestled gently in his upper forties, uh, I can tell you that quite often, I still feel young. And so feeling young, a lot of times, I still feel like where I grew up was that I was supposed to have these washboard abs. And I've watched mm -hmm. I've been in the fight with those abs, you know, you know what, what abs I did have and seeing them go away and seeing them fight. But then I read an article a couple of years ago that mentioned, I don't know if they mentioned dad bods, but they mentioned the different body styles of men around the globe. And so they picked different countries or regions and they were like, okay, if you're in this region of the, of the world, having a, a belly was, was cherished. It was looked upon as being sexy or even a sign of wealth. Right. Um, yeah. you know, and then if you go to another area, you know, this type of body, a slender, tall body was, was, was looked upon as uh, a sign of wealth or power or, you know, any of those things. So, that I had to take a step back at that point and then see where the United States, I think we kind of, you know, pointed toward the washboard abs, you know, type of thing. And, um, and so I actually, I am kind of confused, you know, it was surprising to me hearing, you know, maybe a year or two ago that dad bods were kind of sexy and here it is. I'm feeling <laughs> like, you know, my body is, you know, changing. and it gave me a new breath of life, you know, like, okay, maybe what I got going on could be, Looked upon so that, that's my thought on it is that um that it's still pretty confusing and i think it depends on where you where you go in the world um will determine on what your dad bought is supposed to be or or not um so i'm gonna ask the audience what's your thoughts um do you feel like society our society here in the united states um has glamorized a dad bod um do you feel like it's equally comparable or comparable to the woman body? Do they get the same comparison, the same compassion almost? Um, you know, and one of the things I can say for sure is our society has groomed, and I will go ahead and use the word groomed, um, obesity um, in many ways. When you look at the, the SAD diet, the standard American diet, and how it's literally like tripled from the 1970s, um, you know, you can you can biggie size that. I don't even know the term. Is it biggie size it? I mean, biggie, biggie size it. <laughs> Is it super size or biggie size? I chose all, all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When you can do that and you look at that, and, and definitely Jen can speak to this a little bit more about you know the abundance of food. Now we're crossing over into um, some you know health risk, right, Jen? You know when we talk about the the nutrition change in um, in our society. What, what's your thoughts on that? How do you think that's? Yeah, that's a really good point um, because we know in this kind of era with 
the digital age where we have this all the time and we all a lot of people work from home now or behind a desk you know we we need to do that but we're a lot more sedentary than than what we you know were before our food portions have also gotten bigger um the things that we cook our food with and and I get it. We all have to work and sometimes you don't have time to meal prep or cook. And so you got to get your food on the go, um, but not knowing what's in that, those extra calories. So bigger food portions, eating on the go, eating quickly and sitting a whole lot is contributed to a lot of, of health issues. Um, and you made a really good point about society kind of grooming. And it's, it's almost accepting you know, some of these things. Um, and I don't even look at it as an aesthetics thing. I look at it as a health, you know, a health thing. Yeah. So, you know, we're not trying to be perfect in our bodies, but we have to live in them. We want to feel good. Sometimes some people want to look good. Some people, you know, their, their mindset's their own. But when you look at, a, at it from a health perspective, we know that obesity can cause all kinds of problems. We're looking yeah. at type 2 diabetes, we're looking at cancer, we're looking at fatty liver disease, we're mm -hmm. not a lot of issues. And of course, you know, if you have extra weight, um, and as we get older, if you haven't you know, conditioned your body to exercise, we get arthritis, we get inflammation, we get a lot of a lot of problems. Yeah. That go along That's with that. good. Yeah, thank you. Um, so Nathan says, my experience, the U.S. definitely glams it. My culture, which is Caribbean, European, is the complete opposite. In what ways, Nathan? How is it the complete opposite? Do they deter you from going back for those seconds? Or is it a more of a broader diet, meaning that they have more whole food? In what, in what ways is it the opposite? Um, if I'm reading through this, I'd probably say that they're not glamorizing overeating. Um, but just give us a little context. Um, one thing I will say for sure, and I, you know, and I'm thank you that you said we're not trying to be perfect, because I think sometimes when I get on here, I can definitely say, you know, being a 240 pound woman at one point in time in my life, um, yeah, I was abusing food. Um, I didn't realize that at the time because I was I was young. I didn't have understanding, and culturally, it was acceptable. And I would still go ahead and say, not making this a thing, but I have to reference that, you know, African-American women are ranked number one in the obesity rate, number one. Um, and so when you think about that, we cannot not talk about what you were saying was the health. So that is a danger to a dad body is um, is our health is men's health. Well, if our men are dying young. The heads of our house are dying young for something that is preventable through more times than not proper diet and exercise. And I will tell you, I am a product of my genetics. Literally, I was obese because that was a big thing in my in my family. We we can eat now. I still, I mean, people, I can throw down. Uh, but now I make wiser decisions. I make wiser decisions. Um, so Nathan says, they will let you know you gain all that weight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You have social control. It's yeah. all about portion control. And that, I know that that's a big, like in other countries, they, they watch what they eat. You know, they're not yeah. eating these super big meals, right? Like, I mean, we can, when we go out to eat, we can split a meal. Like we, we literally, we, we never need to buy two meals for each other anymore because mm -hmm. they're so big when you go out. It's like, yes. it's well, yeah. And eating until knowing your body and your hunger and full cues is important there. Sometimes, you know, Food can be social, going out to eat is social, and sometimes we just keep busy and we do this, but recognizing I'm full and stopping mm -hmm. has been yeah, really yeah, helpful. Yeah. yeah. So he said, I don't share dessert. He said, European family looks much more at food portions, less sugar and better balance. Caribbean will feed you a lot, but tell you to go okay. run it off. Yeah. Yeah. Like and it's it. interesting. Like we get, it. Yeah. We get conditioned in these things. And so when we, back specifically to the dad bod is let's say it is originally the term came after um after a guy and a, and a woman had this baby right and they enter into parenthood and you know a lot of men get neglected in my opinion in the prenatal and perinatal and postnatal period you know we focus so much on the mom but the dad's over there also having cravings 
and picking yeah. up one. Well, mom wants ice cream. Well, let's go get ice cream. We got to stop with the food. You well, do got to, you know, got to make this sure. Ice cream good. You have to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> and the other side is, you know, just spinning a dad bod a little bit. A lot of times we think that these body image issues and body dysmorphia and um, binge eating, which is the United States' number one disorder in the eating disorder um, statistical manual, um, is men is just as high. Um, and so when we think about this dad bod, which is typically um, the stomach area, the midsection, it doesn't mean it's necessarily everywhere else. Um, that's a lot of times what, you know, the binge eating is representation of. Now, we're not talking about people. If you have medical issues, please do not say that this is something we're crossing the lines. We know there's some exceptions. You know, medical issues, you have surgery, you can't move. Um, but one of the things even Jeff and I were talking about, um, and I'll let him get to this in a second, about when you're talking about establishing a routine, but we talked about what can you do? And you, I don't care if you can't lift yourself up because you had surgery. You can ask someone to bring you A, B, and C, right? You you still have choices. And so um, let me just move on really quick and ask you, um, we'll start with you, Tyrone, about what brought you into formulating a routine so you don't have a dad bod? So mine is, uh, you know, and I, and I know that there's probably somebody out there and the 7 billion plus uh, people on the planet that has a, a similar background, um, but uh, I, I would still consider mine pretty unique. Uh, I wasn't the, uh, I was the kind of kid when I grew up that I actually, I, I had to shop, get, we had to shop in the Husky section, okay? Um, they just, you know, it was short and thick, okay? Um, and then as I grew of age and, and came in the military, I wasn't really, you know, I made, I made standards, uh, but I wasn't the, the, what you call consider the fittest. But I, looking back on these things, I can also tell you that I, I also didn't go out there and try. I didn't, you know, I just, you know, in the Navy, I went and worked out twice a year, and that was the day of the tests. And and I think I had youth on my side. Um, so around age 20, 25, 26, uh, I went to, I wanted to be a Navy SEAL. And so I did all this training and running and swimming. And um, and so my workout routine actually became more disciplined because of the job. Uh, I really wasn't looking at it in the sense of that, what my body needed to be like and what my body, um, you know, I wanted to have it so I could get through this course. And so I, you know, I went, I went into training uh, in 2001 and, um, you know, I spent, a grip of time there and um you know that's a whole nother subject and um i i did some uh a little bit of eld training going there until i hit to my upper 30s but when i left those programs what happened was d and i had discussed running a marathon so by this time i had already done a lot of uh you know you're running you're swimming and and you know she'd always say hey you know you, we're gonna run a marathon and i said you know i'll do it in my 30s right and now here I am in my 30s. I'm no longer in, in these programs. And I so I kind of had to put up. Right. And so we actually did our first uh, well, my first half marathon. And uh, what year was that? 2000 and somewhere around 2009, eight, nine, 2008 nine. or 2009. So I didn't did a half marathon. And in the training, again, I was still I still felt like I carried a little more muscle mass on me. So it was at this point I realized that my running uh, was actually therapeutic. Um, it was actually, and I still use it to this day. It was actually more um, to help. It was it's uh, it helped ease you know a lot of you know the tension and stress and the mm -hmm. psychological side of things that uh, that I experienced. Um, and, and and to this day, to this day, I still. Uh, so my, my routine is more geared around um, it's it's more medicinal, if I will, if you will. So I'm a little more attached to it than I think most people are. Um, you know, if the body, if it happens that, you know, if, if I get these washboard abs, it, it happens. You know, and it almost sometimes comes at my detriment um, because 
as I'm a pretty experienced runner and, you know, and I, I still lift and, um, but I have to watch it because my body is not in the condition that it once was. So my, my discipline, um, my routine, if you will, is, is geared around that. And I'm, I'm still psychologically attached to, you know, how I felt during those moments. Um, and I watched that and it's kind of, it's kind of built into me that the level of pain or the level of fatigue or my motivation to get out there and do it even when I shouldn't, um, I'm a little more attached to it on, on that side of the house. So that's on, on my side of the house. Um, that's how my routine really got established. Um, and I agree with you, you know, some people are medically can't do anything. And I'm going to consider that with injury. You know, there's, there's folks out there that I know that, um, that just have had an injury and won't allow them to do certain things, but there are other things that you can do and it is challenging, right? You know, you can't be as physical and then you have to switch to a diet. So, yeah. Thank you. You make a lot of good points and we'll swing back around, but I want to see what Jeff, you know, what is the driving force for you or what was it that was the catalyst to get yeah, focused? So, I mean, so I started lifting weights at a pretty young age. Um, just from like lifting, uh, playing football and, and being involved in sports. But I started racing BMX when I was 11. So from that age, right, it was more, not 11 years old, but I was in the gym when I got, you know, my, I don't know, eighth grade to ninth grade, I started going to the gym three to four times a week. Like we were going through and, and that became a routine. And then that routine, you know, I ended up going and racing BMX into my 20s, race professionally. So that routine took me through into college. Um, and and kind of piggybacking off of what he said, I um, when I was younger, I really didn't pay attention to like certain things in my body, right? Like I necessarily didn't really think about what I, the fuel I was putting in or, you know, I was like, all right, I'm just going to eat everything. I'm going to lift hard and I'm going to and, and I'm going to go. Where now, you know, I, I came, I, st I stopped racing for, I don't know, I don't know, what was it, 15 years or so. And I came back and started racing again. That was back in 2017. And then I got back on a routine again and getting back into shape. I hurt myself really bad. I broke my, ended up getting in an accident and broke my, cracked my sacrum on the right side. So I had to learn how to walk again. And... Mm come back from a major injury, right? So touching point on like people who have injuries, yes, there you you do have limitations, but your limitations sometimes are you, right? If you want to get up and you want to do something and you want to you want you to you, know, you want to recover, it. yeah, yeah like I, the the first thing I thought about from the day that I was in the hospital bed was how quick can I get out of here and get back on my mm. Mm. You know, and that and that's what I did. I mean, we Within I don't know how many few months, I was I was up walking again. Like I wouldn't let them let me uh, let them put me out on a wheelchair. Like I made sure I went out in crutches. Like I wasn't wasn't going down easy. And I recovered myself and I was racing again in what eight months, seven months, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just to kind of touch on what you said, yeah. putting fuel in your body, and and Devondre, you said this too. You know, a lot of young men having um, you know heart issues, or I think you started to touch on that cardiovascular issues and how important it is, especially if you do have a little bit of, of weight around the middle and even men that don't, you know, that have yeah. high blood pressure, it's really deceptive. Yeah. Um, you probably wouldn't look at I Jeff did. and know that he has yeah. high blood pressure. Yeah, um, I do. I do when I don't eat right. Yep. Right. If so, I'm eating a good plant-based diet and I'm drinking lots of water, my blood pressure is awesome. Yeah. I start mm -hmm. eating too much red meat and drinking soda and too many, you know, Red Bulls, then my, yeah. My dial style, it goes up every time. You That's know? a danger it's, in itself. It's really, really, you know, it's it's a fine line. It really is a fine line, but a lot of it is uh, is hydration. You know, it's, it's yeah. But, That's good. That's yeah. good. And and I want to just ask those who are watching. You know, what is your driving force with getting healthy? We're going to use that word, or what is preventing you from it? Um, I think everybody has a story and, um, you know, it sounds like, and these are two different, right? One's in the Husky men section, the other one is at the gym every day as a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, real, right? Yeah. Well, what I wanted to touch on real quick, cause we were, and I wanted to wrap that up was, 
the reason I live now and I'm in it and I'm trying to stay in shape is because my body has to be that way. Otherwise, I'll fall apart. You're like, pain. Literally, I'll be in pain. So if I don't stay in shape, I'm miserable. Mm. You know, so that like that's the driving force for me is that like if yeah. I want to live pain free and I don't want to have back problems and I don't want to have knee problems and I want to be mobile, then I have to live. Yeah. But otherwise, I'll fall apart. I feel yeah. everything. That's that's good. And you make some great valid points. Both of you do uh, about not only the physical health proponent of not carrying excess weight. Right. Because um, when you talk about the back, you're also talking about then the hips. And if you're talking about the hips, then you're talking about the knees. And so they're all interconnected. And, um, you know, where Tyrone was going is the psychological part. And, I'm, and I just did a post recently about exercise being this mood enhancer and stress reducer. I can tell you that is definitely 80% of the reason why I hit the gym six days a week. And when I say gym, that means some type of movement. You don't have to go in there and lift up 300 chest presses. Right. Um, the body is just really looking for you to move. And um, I was just reading an article maybe about a month ago or a couple months ago that talked about that people have shifted their perspective about why they exercise now. Before it used to be for looks. It used to be for how their clothes fit. Now it's for their mental health, which brings me to the back to the binge eating thing. And um, because there's a reason you got a dad bod is because there has to be an excessive amount of eating. And being that that is the highest eating disorder in the United States, we have we cannot not take a look at it. And Jen, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago that if you are not checking, even if you go to a restaurant and they post 950 calories for this burger combo, you might as well go ahead and increase that by 25 to probably 50 percent. They can't give you actual right, and unless you're doing your own meal prep, you there's just no way of you really knowing what they're using and how much. Um, so Nathan says getting and staying healthy. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and healthy is going to look different. I think Tyrone was kind of alluding to that when we talked about culture, cultures and society, you know, it's going to look different. I can tell you, and I'm just going to only speak for this experience because it's mine is African-American people. Sometimes if you're too small, you can be ridiculed. Mm-hmm. And I had that happen to me especially when people who hadn't seen me in years now seen me go from a 20, whatever, 1820 to a 02, right? I'm not, I, I get it that I, I'd be checking too, right? Uh, but, you know, it's almost culture. What does healthy look like for you? And for me, that's free of illness and disease. And I yep. can, uh, I can attest to that. Uh, and again, I've always been on the thicker side, so it really is nobody's necessary to pull me to the side. And, and even when I was on my 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 upper end, um, still nobody's ever questioned it. Uh, but I can tell you that my wife, uh, when she had when she was training for competitions or and at this time was was really marathon heavy, you know, her your body, your sport kind of dictates the way your body is. And she got down much lower. And I was, you know, people would pull me to the side and say, hey, is everything, you know, going on there? Is she, is she eating enough? And um, so I can attest to that. That is, that is true. And, you know, I'm, I hear it a lot. You know, hey, you got to have some meat on your bones. Um, and I think more so for the women than it, than so much uh, mm-hmm. the guys, um, I yeah. would say. I, I can definitely, I can definitely, as a, even as a bystander, uh, attest to that. Yeah. So we may not even be looking at different countries. We're looking at just our circles of what is acceptable. And if overweight is acceptable and we're not here judging anybody, because, again, for me, I've been over 100 plus pounds of what I am right now. And I can say that it was acceptable in my circle. And so there was no, oh, you're, you know, you're you're this or you're that. It was kind of like, oh. Okay, she's going back for thirds. I mean, that's what we do, right? Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> and so it wasn't until I made it up in my mind that the health risk, and I can, and for those who do say I want to be healthy, I'm so glad about that because I did not start off to be healthy. It was vanity. I'm just being completely yeah. honest. Oh, and sure. Those, and for those who say it's not about looking good in their clothes, 
like Bravo. I'm not judging that either because now my priority is health. I want to be around for my grandkids. I want to race around. I don't want to be limited by my extra what you know, any of those things. Yeah. So we got to pay attention to that too. Um, and then, you know, making sure that we don't get on any extreme. Um, Jen, we talked a little bit about this as far as sports go, right? And for men and you guys, I mean, I know you didn't really do too much. You did a little jujitsu or karate. What was it? Karate? I'm sorry. When you were a kid. <laughs> He's a seal. He's done some crazy stuff. Man. Yeah. Oh, oh, I was the bystander to that. And, um, <laughs> and I would just say that the point is there's some sports that men are involved in that actually promote, um, imbalance and unhealthy weight loss. Oh, and, we were talking yeah. about wrestling, I think, when these oh, guys yeah. wrapping themselves Dude, up. And we used to suits. run the stairs with trash bags on to, to make weight. You yes. know, like it, it was, that was a normal thing. You know, but we were running yeah. stairs. Yeah, I mean, wrestling in high school, that was a normal thing. Right, wrestlers, boxers, you know. So just yeah. started young. Oh yeah. It started like, in high school. Yeah. That's how my dad got started chewing tobacco is because he was losing weight for wrestling. You know, that's yeah. how he got started getting hooked on that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so some of this can be conditioned even when um, young men are, I mean, when men are younger, right? Mm -hmm. And they're trying to fulfill something as they get older. And so when the dad, Bob, then comes up, what do I do with this? And we see this in some of our veterans. You can't get them dungarees anymore. Do I still wear dungarees? dungarees. Okay. <laughs> the point is... <laughs> the point is, when you recognize you no longer are the size that you are, it can play on your mental health. And so depression is high, mm -hmm. um, when you, especially when you're talking about men who finally have accepted that they do not want the dad bod anymore. Anxiety around, can I maintain this? Whatever it is I'm doing for this length of time to get back to whatever the image is. And the image sometimes is around the image is around, um, you know, who your partner is. Yeah. Right. You know, that we play, we talked about that a little bit. Um, do you think that if Jen wasn't as athletic and um, into the gym as much as you, would that play on how you would um, show up? You know, I was in that point where you were like, where it was vanity for me too. Right. Like I'm I, I wouldn't go and look bad in a pair of jeans. Right. Like I was going to that was like I wanted to look good. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think a lot of that has died in me. But. Yeah, I mean, that that look for me, that that dad bod for me is like going from a 32 to a 34 mm -hmm. in a, in a pair of jeans. Right. So if I gain two inches in my waist, I'm not in a good spot. Yeah. Like it, I'm going to be a mess. I'm not going to be happy. But. If Jen, if Jen didn't work out, I'd probably still stay in shape to an extent just because of what I like to do. Like, I I like to – I still like to ride mountain bikes. I like to get – you know, I like to do stuff that's kind of crazy. So in order for me to do that, I have to stay in shape. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to put this out there. Um, you know, I think we've talked about the number on the scale, and I know – you know, we had this conversation that as women, we sometimes we get fixated on that number on the scale. And I, I was guilty of this. I associated a certain number with the perfect body. Didn't matter what it looked like or how healthy it was, but with that number. Um, and I know that for myself, it, it took some time to get over that. But how important, you know, because you weigh yourself quite often. How important is that number on the scale to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm I, 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 I can usually guess my weight. He's weighing himself at night at the end of the day after yeah. he's been eating. You're bold. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no. I, I mean, I, I like to stay like right now. I'm, I'm at 190, and I stay like right around 188 to 190 is usually where I fluctuate. When I lift heavy, I'll get up to you know, but I've gotten up to what 220 before. How important is that I'm, number on the scale? Yeah, that's pretty important. Yeah. yeah pretty we don't important. talk about men a lot looking right. at that number on the scale, you know, outside of like if you were trying to meet yeah. weight for a sport. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm so in touch with my body. Like I I can tell, like I know if I got four extra pounds on or two extra mm -hmm. pounds on. I know if I'm two pounds down, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't have to step on the scale. Yeah. I know. Curious if what Tyron thinks about the number on the scale as far as. Oh, so, it's funny you say that. So. I, and I have to, re, I got to go back to 
those training days that I was talking about, I, I didn't complete the program, but I spent a year there. That's like six months longer than you should have if you've ever been there. Right. Um, I went through um, the hell week on uh, class 237 um, and I was admin drop for some me and wetsuits don't get along. All right. Yeah. No, I'm but, with I was, you. <laughs> but I was, I was an older guy, you know, and I still try to, you know, I try to do some slick stuff. And, you know, I, when I got orders to uh, EOD school, you know, those things kind of surfaced and then, you know, finally pulled the plug. But what happened in those eras, I never used the scale. And when I left the program, I remember all the things that I put my body through it was about it was about the mental toughness and, and what my body, you know, again, never really cared on what my body needed to look like or weigh. And I remember when I was out of the program, I remember telling her, I'm not going to run ever again. And I must have ballooned up because I was still eating, you know, in, in those training programs, I'm probably eating 4,000, 5,000. Easily five to six thousand calories yeah. and I heavy into it, and then out of it, I kept eating like and I blew up. And yeah. it was at that moment that I knew I messed up. So, warp forward years later, as I finally adjusted, because I again I was an older gentleman um, in those programs, and I think warp forward as I started knowing and getting into distance running, I knew where my body needed to be. So just like what you said, Jeff. I knew I needed to be spot on at 183 pounds. It just happened to me. I was a I was a good endurance endurance runner at this point. Um, the minute I hit 185 pounds, without even being you know, if it was a horrible run, I knew that mm -hmm. I must have gained those two pounds and I would go in there and weigh. And sure enough, yeah. that's what happens to this day. The only difference is as I've gotten older, that 183 pounds isn't what it needed to be. You know it like shifted, you know, if I'm over 190 pounds, my body is like, no, no way. So I, that's really the only time I get on the scales if I'm having a consistently subpar events, you know, if it just keeps happening repetitive, then I'll know that I'm over, I'm over that. Uh, every now and then I can tell if, you know, some pants are a little more snug, but that's <laughs> pretty much, um, I, I like to usually, I focus usually on the, not much, not so much the weight as I am the performance of it. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of what I, where I, when I talk to guys about it, stay off the scale if you can. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a little harder if I'm talking to, to women, but I say stay off scale, focus on your performance. So if you know that your run times are, have gotten better, that's really what it is because then I think everything else is going to follow. Whatever it is you're desiring to do, if you decide and you want to be a, a better lifter, then are your numbers are you are your numbers getting stronger or more endurance then guess what the weight shouldn't really matter right yeah. um and easier said than done if you're a, a pick on a woman who's getting a little more beefier than they than, than she wants to hey i'm just so and so that's that's kind of where my mindset is I, I i usually don't fixate on the scale as much as i do the performance and then you know my clothes and one of the things to speak about the scale i think like it's different when you get someone who's just making the transition to getting a healthier lifestyle. I know what 135 pounds, 130 pounds feels like on my performance because I've been there several times and that's my peak. And so I hear you, Jeff, saying, I know when I'm 188 and one night, like that's my good place. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's OK to be able to do that because you've been that and you have performed at that level. But I would say someone just learning about their body coming away from a dad bod blow up or just now getting their health. They don't know that. Don't There's look. <laughs> don't look at the scale. Do what the one said. Go by your go by the way you feel. What you did. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because you can get wrapped up and addicted to it and mm -hmm. all of those other mental challenges. So um, which leads me into um, my last question is what would you tell a man who. I'm ready to get rid of that, Bob. Not for vanity, not for necessarily performance for a you know bike event or a competition or a run. I just want to be around for my kids and grandkids to get healthy. What kind of advice could you give them, Jeff? I mean, there the two major things, right? That I that I would look at is like we talked about before is routine, right? Is fitting it in, let's say, three days a week, right? And I don't think that's too much. It's like, okay. On Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to do 45 minutes 
and I'm going to, I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and write out, write yourself out a workout and the other, you know, stick to that program and cause you have to take small steps. So, you know, doing, doing that will, will just help um, create good habits. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, an accountability partner, like, you know, that's nice cause I have you, but not everyone has that. But the second thing is your meal planning, right? It's paying attention to what you're putting in your body. Um, if you do those two things, if you start paying attention to what you're putting in your body and you start cooking your own food and, and you know, cutting things out, like not eating out as much, right? Instead of eating meat five times a week, cut it back to like twice a week, right? You know, make some of those changes, small changes. Yeah. And, you know, cut back on the red meat, cut back on your dairy, just, you know, still do it, but just be mindful, you know, of how much vegetables you're getting. And just, if you plan that out on a Sunday evening, right. Or a Sunday afternoon and plan out your week, like I'm going to eat these things during the week and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to work out three times. You'll see massive, massive results. If, if someone really just sticks to that, if they say, okay, I'm going to start working out three times a week, and I'm going to start tracking my food or I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to I'm going to go and I'm going to cook my or bake my food for lunch instead of going out to eat, you know, at, you know, at work every week. You know that those things make a difference. They the calories add up, the, the fats add up, you know, that all that stuff adds up. So if you start taking accountability to that, then it definitely uh, it helps for sure. So that would be my two biggest things is pay attention to what you're putting in your body get on a routine yeah before tyrone answers if there is someone who's watching what is your uh, struggle with um what is something that um maybe we can answer for you today regarding um exercise or nutrition or what has been the struggle tyrone what what advice would you give someone uh, who's just starting out trying to get rid of the dad bod or get I'm, healthy i'm gonna give you i'm a big analogy guy and i'm gonna give you two things out there uh, to start it off with. And there's a meme that, you know, some of you've seen and not seen before. And it's kind of like magic might make X million dollars, let's say $200 million. I don't know what the number is. Um, you know, that's the the movie with, I mean, ladies should know who magic Mike is. And then the, the, the joke on there is that uh, well, Shrek made like double that. So just so we're clear, right? Shrek had more of the dad bod vice, the magic Mike. Mm -hmm. The second part is I'll say is Thor, the new Thor movie is going to be coming out. And I know there's a scene where they, they you know, who's the guy that plays Thor? Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Okay. Chris's clothes come off, right? And he's a pretty, pretty big guy. And I know that that's going to capture a lot of hearts. Um, <laughs> and a lot of guys, <laughs> a lot of guys are going to like, I'm jealous of that. But, but what, I, what I learned about that a couple of days ago is that Chris Hemsworth, he put on the biggest size that he could this particular movie. So he's around 220 pounds. And they yeah. mentioned that he had to eat eight times a day to keep mm -hmm. up. With it. So I want you to understand that when you're looking for these type of bodies, A, if I, if I give you the analogy with the Shrek and the Magic Mike, who grossed more, right? I don't know if the dad body that Shrek had was just more appealing. Or if I tell you that Chris had to put on a whole bunch more pounds and eat. It's a whole lot of work to keep those type of bonds. And so my point to you is find balance. I love what Jeff said is accountability, but but you got to have accountability for yourself. You got to find a goal that's bigger than what it is that you, why you're wanting to work out. If you only want to work out for vanity, you know, then hopefully the vanity is greater than that Big Mac. Hopefully that vanity is, is greater than that couch. But I'm going to tell you to find a healthy balance um, because you can get yourself in a point where you're working out too much, where you're not taking time off. And if you don't find a healthy balance into what makes sense for you, then it's never going to work. There's a lot of people that can go look at David Goggins. Um, um, I knew David when he was a little bigger than he is. And, you know, and I see him that he's much skinnier right now. But um, the thing is, a lot of people I know follow and they they have this vision that they can get to his level there, but it's in all actuality, it just doesn't work for them, right? And it's the same thing that you can look at um, Arnold, young Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? 
you know, I wanted to be like him, but there's just no way it got to a point where it was, it was almost, you know, with limitations. There's no way I can get to that. You gotta, you gotta manage healthy expectations for you. It's okay to, to do some of the things that, that either David Goggins is doing or what Arnold did into the spectrum here, but there's, there's has to be a, a good balance for you. So you are healthy in doing your working out because if not, you're going to, you're going to quit. You're going to do like I did and blew up. Right, you're gonna just give up, and and it's never gonna work. So find healthy balance, um, and be accountable. Find a find a healthy goal and be accountable to that as well. That's good, both of you. That's really good, Jen. What advice would you give? Um, I know is I wanted to make sure the men had an opportunity to share that first, as other men can look as be in more relation to that than women. But what is something you would give? Um, I know just with people I've interacted with, there's a lot of confusion out there about food, um, diets. We, we know we have, you know, keto and paleo and intermittent fasting, and there's so much information out there. It can be overwhelming and confusing. Um, and the same thing with exercise, you know, do I lift with barbells? Do I just do cardio? Those are all, um, kind of complicated topics, but, you know, like Jeff said, accountability is a big one. Sometimes just myself, you know, or, or I have people that come to me because they, they need accountability. Or like, if I don't come to you, you're holding me accountable. I'm, I'm paying for your time. So I'm showing up. Some people can show up for themselves. It's, you know, some people can't. You have to figure out what you can do, what is reasonable. But at the same time, you know, if you can't figure that out, seek help, ask friends, get in some groups, you know, get a coach, do something, but take steps forward. But I would say above all, what is your why? You know, why do you want this? What is your your motivating factor? Um, I think Tyrone kind of alluded to that too. Why do you want this? And and even then, sometimes it's not as simple as just cutting out a few things. We know there's underlying health issues. Hormones is a big one. Um, Devondre, you mentioned this. Eating disorders is a big one too. You know that that's mental. That's a getting some mental health help. So there's just so much that goes into it. Um, yeah. Not always a simple answer. Yeah. So Sean to say yes, Tyrone, exactly. Personal, personally healthy and realistic expectations. And, you know, when we, I was reading an article that talked about the expectations that women more times than not believe their partner wants them smaller. And then mm -hmm. the woman chooses to be smaller than that. So they mentioned an example, if a woman is an eight, she believes her partner thinks that they should be a six, so they desire to be a four. And trust me, I have my own share of loopholes. Um, you know, we all talked about accountability. I love, love my coach because he is, he is an accountability. And, and what's funny is it's not like he's knocking the ding dong on my hand. You get what I'm saying? So you still have to be accountable to yourself, even if I got to send my photos in my way every Friday, right? He, regardless, he's not here to do the prep. He's not here to make sure I get my water in. He's not there to make sure I eat every meal, you know, none of that. And so even when you have an accountability partner per se, unless you are living with your accountability partner, other than that, they're not going to do the work for you. It still has to be something in here even if it is vanity, like you said, even if it is that. So um, all good points. My only thing is, um, um, oh my gosh, there was this great saying that um, I found last year, but it, basically you don't get to complain about the things you're not doing. Um, if you're doing the things, don't complain about them. You know what I mean? It's kind of like this play on words where, you know, if you're not doing it, you don't get to. I know when I've let my little little start good up, and then I get to that point where I'm on my high end and I'm like, oh no, okay, it's time to get myself back in order. However, sometimes our habits can get in the way and it makes it very difficult for people to break those habits. And so hopefully we were able to give some good information. I thank you all for the comments and the interaction. Um, don't give me those emoji eyes. Claudia says, great information. Let's go around if there's any last words before we wrap up. Yes. Well, yeah, what I'd like to say is uh, two things. Ladies, if you just, you know, if anybody that's in a relationship, um, especially in those long terms, 
you you know, if she wanted me to have washboard abs, all she has to do is tell me, oh, I think that is sexy. And guess what? <laughs> Without question, I'm probably going to go in there and be crunching Not Billy crunching. Blanks. I don't know what he does. You know, Tybo. <laughs> Tybo. I'll become a Tybo, bro. Uh, but where I want to bring that right back around to where you have to have it internally is because also in long-term relationships, that doesn't work for us because when she turns around and says this, I like you at all shapes, all shapes and sizes. So I can't really go off of what he finds is, is attractive because whether I'm on my big side or my small side, she feels like it's attractive. So I'm right back to square one. It has to be, it has to be inside. I don't know what she thinks is sexy. So I really have to do it um, for myself if that's what a driver is. So it's your heart. It's your heart, doll. Anyway, we'll talk about that after. Um, any last minute um, words? Any last words? No. Nope. Try to get a sweat in at least 30 minutes a day. You know? Movement every day. Yeah. Movement. And we talked about that before. Even if you can't do it all in one sitting, break it up if you have to. If you're dropped. Yep. I, I live my life with that mentality. It's like, if I can't get my work, I just got to gotta sweat for 30 minutes. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I just got to get a sweat in for 30 minutes a day. So if you can do that, that will that's a good start. Yeah, it's a great start. Get your water in people. Eat whole yeah. foods as much as possible. It doesn't mean don't have those treats every once in a while, although I can't for a little bit. But it doesn't mean you can't have your treats every once in a while because you know what? You would hate to leave God's green earth without having an amazing carrot cake or like a brownie or a cookie or something like seriously. All right, y'all. Well, thank you for joining in to Fit Chat Chit Chat. If you would love to be on the show, please email me at fitchatchitchat at gmail.com. You can find me on all platforms at Fit Therapist. Find me on YouTube at Fit Therapist. And you can find Jen at, give me your Facebook page again and email, please. My email. Well, I'm going to have my website up here soon. Um, Plug it. It's not quite ready yet. Facebook, <laughs> <laughs> find you on Facebook email and yeah, Facebook at Jen Miller. Jen Miller, Facebook, and the email. I think I was talking over you when you said it. Oh, sorry, Jen Miller forty eight at Gmail. That's thank all you. changing. Yeah, all changing. All right. Well, thank you all for joining in. Remember, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or questions or comments for any one of our panelists, please just put it in the comment section. I'll make sure it gets to the right person. Take care. God bless. And don't get the dad bod. <laughs> Take care. Bye.